And welcome back everybody. Frank Tomano is our guest. We're talking about uh, local history in general and in particular we're talking about a series, uh, 21 articles Frank did on uh, Mohawk Valley milestones, some of the things that really impacted our area. Great series. I hope they do it something like that again, Frank. Well, they might. As I said, I'm fortunate. We've got people at the Odita who love local yeah. history. Yeah. and. Uh, one of the ones that you did, and you touched on it briefly, uh, was uh, uh, Thomas Proctor and his wife Mariah. Uh, the the uh, you know the fortune that they had that wasn't just the Proctor money was Munson Williams and well, uh, m mainly from uh, Mariah Proctor's mother, Helen Munson Williams. Yeah. She really well, her father was the founder of the fortune, but she turned four hundred thousand dollars into millions. Mm -hmm. You know, and and was a giver, gave to the city. Great people, great family. We owe so much to, to, and, to them. And one of, the, uh, one of the milestones that you mentioned is the uh, park uh, land that they gave. Yeah, I was kind of interested. Why were the Proctors interested in parks, you know? And, and, um, and, and I didn't, this, this had been written about before. And uh, but when, uh, when Mariah and Thomas Proctor were married, they went to London for their honeymoon, a lot of parks, small parks right in London, and uh, they were impressed. They saw kids playing, and at that time, Utica had two parks, Stuben and Chancellor on Bleecker Street, Stuben and Park. And that was it? Huh? And that was it? That, that was it, and you know, um, they didn't have signs, keep up the grass, but you know, there, were, there was no room for kids to play. They were and, like uh, ornamental parks, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. there was a big fountain in each one, and. Uh, but um, so, so they came back, and uh, Thomas Proctor owned the Bags Hotel farm. He was proprietor of Bags Hotel, and it was on um, Welsh Bush Ave and Culver Ave, across from today's swimming pool, now Thomas R. Proctor Park. And it was about 100, 100 acres. And he said they, they returned from London from their honeymoon, and they said, this be, let's make this a park for the people. And, uh, and as I wrote in the column, the Common Council rejected it and said, well, it would cost too much money to maintain. And if you're going to have a park in East Utica, you should have one in West Utica. The Proctors couldn't believe it. So they began buying land, which is now Roscoe Conquering Park. At that time, it was just vacant land. They began buying, you know, 15, 20 acres at a time, paying the taxes on it. And then... 1908, where they had all the, and in all sections of the city, these little parks. In 1908, they turned the deeds over to the city. And that included uh, the Spriggs Park, which is on Court Street and Erie. Uh, it's kind uh, of like at a, a point. At, at, right? at a point, yeah. right. Addison Miller. Mm -hmm. And the Thomas Proctor, I guess together with his wife Mariah, picked the names. And then Proctor, who was a big Republican, uh, the night was Horatio Seymour Park, which is Murnane Field and the James Donovan Stadium now. But if you go by Sunset Ave now, you'll see a big block that says Horatio Seymour. Right. People forget, but it's, and Seymour was a Democrat, so. And then the big thing, he went to Oneida and what is now the Parkway, and he said there was 300 and something acres, Roscoe Conquering Park, wow. You know, and uh, gave it all to the city. And then later, Thomas Proctor Park. And then after he died in 1920, his wife, Mariah, gave us Frederick Proctor Park, which is on Culver Ave and Rector Street. But uh, we owe them so much. Wasn't their dream, Frank, uh, to uh, acquire enough land to give over to the city for public use so that it would be a continuous green belt around yeah. the city? Yeah, that, that, that was their original dream. In fact, it, it was Thomas Proctor's idea for a parkway at the time you had Pleasant Street, and I think they started in 1911, and they went from Genesee like to Elm Street, the park, what we now know as the Parkway, and then um, they did, and then World War I stopped a lot of it, but then eventually they reached Mohawk Street, and now, yeah, but that was his idea. Of course, at that time, you know, a uh, um, certain section of the city, there, there wasn't that much um, not that many houses, so it was possible to do that. Yeah, but, but they, I think they, they love parks. So they wanted to just be able to. If you got into a park, you could have stayed in the park and go out go right around, around the city. The city yeah. Why wouldn't that have been something? Yeah, that idea came up again in the 1960s. Um, 
Jeffrey Clifford, who was, uh, we graduated together from Utica College, he loved the environment. I remember he wrote a, um, a piece for the OD suggesting the same thing. It's almost impossible now to do it, yeah. You uh, also talked about three area men that had a shot at uh, becoming president. Well, yeah, to me that, that, that fascinates me. Um, you know, I mentioned uh, Elihu Root, who, from Clinton, and uh, uh, when William McKinley was elected president, he named Root the Secretary of War, brilliant corporate lawyer. And uh, in 19, uh, 1901, when McKinley was going to run for re-election, he wanted Root to run as his vice president. And most of the Republican leaders wanted Root to run, a brilliant man. Root didn't, he, he refused. He said, thank you very much, but no. And instead they picked Theodore Roosevelt, who many of the Republicans didn't like because he was a little bit too radical for them. And um, of course in 1901, McKinley was assassinated and Theodore Roosevelt became president or Root would have become our 26th president of the United, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of the United States. Didn't he, uh, uh, it, it was interesting, Frank, here he is Secretary of War, but he won the Nobel Peace Prize, yes? Oh yeah, 1912, yeah, for, for um, uh, he really worked, not for one, any one specific thing, but Japan was at war with Russia, and countries were warned, mm -hmm. and he worked for peace, and, and they gave him, which is quite, I mean, quite an yeah. honor. I mean, then, of course, we have James Schoolcraft Sherman. Sh Sherman, who, um, you know, he was vice president when William Howard Taft was, um, and William Howard Taft was, you know, about 350 pounds, and I don't know how, he, he lived until 1930, but I always thought if, um, if, uh, if he had died, mm -hmm. you know, here James Schoolcraft Sherman from Genesee Street would have been uh, yeah. our 28th president of the United States. And uh, lived in a house uh, which is now a little small uh, strip mall on uh, the corner of uh, Genesee and uh, Clinton Place. Yeah, between Clinton Place and uh, Jewett Place, just the wall of his house. Mm -hmm. we, we, I think we did a we show did. there. Yeah, show yeah. there one time. And the uh, third one. Well, Horatio Seymour. In fact. Um, I'm writing in my column because uh, uh, 150 years ago, uh, he was, the uh, Democrats picked him to run for president of the United States against Ulysses S. Grant. Mm -hmm. And um, he got clobbered in the electoral vote, but he, the popular, popular vote was very, very, very close. We're going to have to uh, end it on that note, but come back again. We will pick Anytime. up some more of yep. these. Thank okay, you. Joe. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back next week. We'll do it all again. Don't forget cnyhomepage.com. Lots of good stuff there. Until next time, take care of yourself, everybody.